So blood gas interpretation follows some kind of basic rules, um, and you can approach it in a number of different ways. I'm going to kind of go over one main way that you can approach it, but there's other ways. Um, and so we evaluate kind of those three main items that I already talked about, pH, um, the metabolic process, bicarbonate, and the respiratory process, PCO2. Um, if the pH is affected, obviously that's going to be acidemia or alkalemia, but you can have animals that only have a metabolic or respiratory process or both, and it may affect the pH or it may not affect the pH. What we're going to talk about right now is things that actually are resulting in a change in the pH in the patient, and that's when we talk about primary and compensatory disorders. All right, so let's start with pH. And so let's start with a decrease in pH, which of course is called an acidemia. The question is, what's leading to the acidemia? And so you can evaluate everything and just jot down notes on a case, or you can actually um, do it the way I'm about to do it right now. So what I do is I see that my pH is decreased, I write down that there's acidemia, and then I look to see who has the, the osis, who has the acidosis. And so let's say, let's take two scenarios. This is scenario one, and this is kind of scenario two. So in scenario, and we'll draw a dotted line down the middle so that you don't combine them. So in scenario one, I see that my patient actually has a decrease in bicarbonate. And that decrease in bicarbonate, of course, I know is a metabolic acidosis. And of course, I know things that cause a metabolic acidosis, which we'll talk about. So this is, my, at least I have one primary process. My primary process is a metabolic acidosis. Of course, I still have to look at PCO2. So now let's look at PCO2. And my PCO2 is actually also decreased. And I know that this is my respiratory acid, and if it's decreased, that must mean that I have a respiratory alkalosis. And so it's the opposite, and so it's the compensatory, meaning that the body is responding. How does the body respond, and what's the primary cause here? So the primary cause, again, is a metabolic acidosis, and I know what causes a metabolic acidosis. Those are things such as loss of bicarbonate, or um, t loss or secretion of bicarbonate through the kidneys or GI, or it could be due to titration of acids. So we already know about that, and we would need our chemistry to tell us. How do you get a compensatory respiratory alkalosis? Will you exhale more PCO2? So you just blow off more PCO2, and that's how you deal with the acidosis. So on scenario one, we have an acidemia, with a primary metabolic acidosis and a compensatory respiratory alkalosis. So now let's do scenario two. So in scenario two, we're still talking about an animal who has an acidemia, but in scenario number two, this animal has an increase in bicarbonate, which is of course a metabolic alkalosis. So I'm gonna keep that in the back of my mind and I'm gonna go ahead and look at the PCO2. And in this case, my PCO2 is increased. And of course, that's a respiratory acidosis. Why do I get a respiratory acidosis? I'll tell you in a second, but this is primary since I have acidemia. Now the question is, do I have a concurrent metabolic acidosis contributing? Is the metabolic side not participating because it hasn't had time or it can't? Or do I have a compensatory process? And so now I look at my bicarbonate. And in the fake case I've made up in my head, my bicarbonate is actually increased. And of course, that's a metabolic alkalosis. So a metabolic alkalosis would be compensatory in this case. And so my kidneys are responding by retaining more bicarbonate. And so I have a primary respiratory acidosis causing my acidemia and a compensatory metabolic alkalosis. So what actually causes these primary disorders? Well, you know what causes the metabolic 
acidosis um, disorders, which we talked about, well, what causes potentially a primary respiratory acidosis? Remember that PCO2 is 20 times more diffusible than oxygen. So essentially, all you have to do is, do is exhale. So you have to breathe it out. Well, if you're not breathing, if you're hypoventilating, then you are not breathing out PCO2. So a big cause is going to be hypoventilation as a primary, and the other is going to be um, decreased gas exchange. And again, this doesn't happen easily for CO2, and that's because CO2 is rapidly diffusible. So this would be kind of chronic severe alveolar disease. Now, of course, hypoventilation can be a compensatory thing, right? So if you had a metabolic acidosis or a metabolic alkalosis, you could exhale or um, hypoventilate. So you could hyperventilate or hypoventilate to control the amount of PCO2 leaving your body or staying in your body. So if I had a primary metabolic alkalosis, right, from a loss of hydrochloric acid or sequestration, my respiratory tract would respond so that I would hold in more PCO2 by hypoventilating. So that would be the response that you could see. Whereas if I had a primary metabolic acidosis, again, due to loss or secretion, of bicarbonate or titration of acids, I would want to decrease my PCO2, right? Because I would want a respiratory alkalosis, and so I would exhale more PCO2 by hyperventilation. So that's you, how your lungs compensate. Again, the respiratory acidosis, if it's a disease from hypoventilation, it could be because you have something like an obstruction, perhaps a laryngeal paralysis. Um, it could be from maybe you were given opioids and you don't remember to breathe because your kind of breathing drive is suppressed. And hyperventilation, right, where hyperventilation with that primary respiratory alkalosis, it could be from pain if an animal is breathing um, quickly because they're in pain or they're stressed or excited. So we use some terminology that I won't test you on, but essentially a simple disorder means that just one thing's wrong. So maybe there's something wrong with respiratory or something's wrong with metabolic, but it's not impacting the pH. We identify a primary disorder when there's a pH change and one or the other, metabolic or respiratory, is affected. And the examples we've been doing were compensatory, meaning that there's a pH change, a system that's causing that primary change, and the other's compensating or responding to fix it. You can have combined disorders where there's two primary disorders, uh, and then there's mixed disorders, which we've talked about in terms of both um, maybe two systems on the metabolic side are metabolic and respiratory. The last thing to mention is, again, hypoxemia, which is a decreased PO2 or PaO2. You're probably going to talk about this in anesthesia. We only diagnose this on arterial blood samples, so not venous blood samples. And when we talk about differentials of hypoxemia, um, we're not really going to talk about this a lot, but we'll do a few cases. Uh, the easiest one to realize is decreased oxygen in the air. So less oxygen in the air, so decreased oxygen content of inspired air. Um, classic example, going up on Mount Everest. Not likely in your patients. A second one, and another easy one to realize, is hypoventilation. And hypoventilation just meaning perhaps you have an obstruction or you have a depressed um, kind of breathing drive because you've been given an opioid, and so you're not moving any air. And again, since, since carbon dioxide is 20 times more diffusible than oxygen, as long as you're breathing, PCO2 is not going to increase. But in hypoventilation, of course, you're not really breathing, and so we're going to see an increase in PCO2 often, but not an increase um, 
but not, um, but not usually without an increase, excuse me, a decrease in PO2. So you have hypoxemia and you can have a respiratory acidosis. Another one is going to be decreased gas exchange. So this is usually has to do with alveolar di disease. Uh, this tends to cause our decrease in oxygen much more so than an increase in PCO2. And again, this is because PCO2 is so diffusible across the alveolus unless there's really chronic ongoing alveolar disease. Uh, and then the last one is something called a VQ mismatch, and this has to do with shunting of blood around alveoli, and we're really not going to talk about that at all. We'll talk very briefly about hypoxemia. We'll practice going over these cases in class, and uh, there is a pretty thorough explanation um, that kind of walks you through various blood gas cases in the workbook.